You are listening to the Law Enforcement Pirate Radio Network. Radio Free Larry. You can run, but you can hide. All right, I thought I should re-speak on this. I've been speaking on it for years, on and off. However, um, mostly in public or to spirits and to heaven, quite frankly. I have been heard in heaven by more than just God. Uh, There are gatherings in heaven, uh, the size of which you have not ever seen upon the earth or quite frankly, could uh, realize unless you can connect to them. And I've seen them in creation stretch for miles upon miles. And there is a focal point, but your focal point is spiritual. So you can see uh, beyond normal vision. And I have been heard speaking. I have manifested in uh, a form um, similar to what I appear to be on the planet. And I would speak in front of uh, angels, spirits, and other things in the presence of the Almighty God. And all that required was for me to speak out loud on earth, um, whatever the topic was that was wanting to be heard on. Uh, One of these uh, topics is, uh, is it predestination or is it free will? I wrote free choice earlier. I was in a hurry. I should have wrote free will, but... You know, that's kind of a simplistic way of saying will, choice. It's both and neither. So when God gives me this information, a lot of times that's where it is. It's both and neither. Or it's, it's, it's some of this and some of that. It's always other than what is being spoken about or thought about. So first off, let's get back to creation. Creation is created perfect. Creation is created not to die. That is your soul. Your soul is both form and formless. Now, the Jews argue that God has no form. (laughs) But yet, if you look in the Old Testament scriptures, in the Torah, the Talmud, God has form. God appears as a color. God appears on a throne. So God does have some form. It's not physical form. You don't have physical form either. Again, you were made in their image, which is another one that people don't spend a lot of time looking at. We will make them in our image. And it's not just Jesus and God. The church gets a little confused on how things happen. That's okay. I mean, they're human. They make mistakes. But don't be evil. Don't be evil, especially in, in my presence. And you've, you've been evil in my presence, both physical and spiritual presence. <clears throat> so you're a creation. You're created perfect. You have free will to do what God creates in perfection. So that's where it starts to get tricky. You're created by God. In the image of God, you do exactly what God would do in any circumstance. That's really where it is. God doesn't build a game. God doesn't build something to see if you have the metal to return to heaven. (laughs) God doesn't do that. God's not twisted. God is perfection. So first, you're built perfect. You can't make any mistakes. You can't sin. You can't do anything wrong. Um, Then, all of a sudden, you want to wear clothes. (laughs) It's kind of simplistic in in the garden, but it's actually very intelligent. I call God's information a little bit more than, you know, when I'm speaking on it, more than preaching. I call it God's logic. I call it knowledge. I call it intelligence. 
because it really is, but people don't know what it is, and we can't know what it is without God. Again, God's ways are higher, and we're trying to speak on these things in a lower manner, and it's interesting, as I said, how the governor of Texas was honoring Keeney through some very severe clouds of hate. And it kind of shifted in a way that he wouldn't see it. But he says, God works in mysterious ways. Well, not really. The Bible explains becoming all things. I've explained becoming all things. And there's some other things in the Bible also. So we're going to back up again to being created perfect. We're all created perfect in the image of God. If you're created in the image of God and not created in the image of God, we're pretty perfect. And what else about us in our, in our true soul form? What else about us? We're created equal. And God created us equal to God, but yet we're not. There's no way that could exist. It's just an impossibility. But that begins to show you God's mind. God says, we will make them in our image. An image, if I take a hard drive, and this is how I teach people, and again, the times will change the preaching as God reveals more information in the physical world around us. In the physical world around us is biblical information all day long. So image, hard drive image. If I take a hard drive image, a storage device image, uh, a chip, you know, your little uh, micro, not a chip, a micro uh, storage device, and I take that image and put it on another disk or another hard drive, that image is exactly as the first image. There's a blessing uh, from God in that information, but yet we're not God. So again, when I say that, your mind should go, how is that? Because we're not speaking about hard drives here. (laughs) We're talking about God and creation. There's little parts of this that are still mysterious. How are we not exactly like, well, because we're not God. It's just a different thing. And I went through so much thought in the first years of waking up, and then uh, the deep state attacked again in earnest. Not that they weren't attacking me all along. It's simply that they really began moving additional CIA operation. They began drugging me again, so on and so forth. And psychologically torturing. And psychologically torturing. U.S. citizens are being psychologically tortured into many things, including terrorists and mass shooters. Not to say that they didn't do anything wrong. Not to say that they did. Because the moment I leave that out, they'll go, well, this person was this, and we just did that. And They're very evil. Just tell yourself that, and you'll save yourself um, some very uh, difficult moments after you leave the body. And I'll leave it at that for now. So you're made perfect, and then Adam and Eve are made perfect, and God gets confused. Why is Adam wearing clothes? Why does Adam have covering on? But yet, when we read the Bible, we understand that we are to be covered. So where is all of that? Is that very mysterious? Yes. Why won't preachers notice that? Because they don't want you to understand that really... We're supposed to be naked. Not telling you to be naked, but really we're supposed to be naked. But if you look at God, God's confused. Like, what are you doing? What has happened here? Have Have you eaten from that tree? Now, when we get to the basic idea of what's happening in a physical sense, it doesn't make sense. If we get to a spiritual sense of it, we begin to make sense of it, but we don't have enough information. Now, Jesus said, greater work shall you do. I always speak of some of the things that Srila Prabhupada said, and as I became all things, I learned some of those things that he spoke and the information that he had. They were asking as to why do all powerful people that come to earth that have this you know, the, the, the Spirit of God on them, the touch of God within them, why don't they do everything all at once? Why does it take such a long time to do all of this? And he said, because that's his grace to leave things for you to do. 
So when we go back to this idea of Jesus saying, greater work shall you do, the church has missed the mark on what Jesus was saying, but it is there, and it was spoken sometime most likely in the 1970s in another religion, that their leader, you can't call that guy anything other than somebody that accepts Jesus. He has spoken publicly about accepting Jesus and being a sinner. Maybe there's something in your church doctrine that you could pull out to say that maybe there's something he's not doing right. Well, he admits that. He's actually admitted to being sinful and being worthless. But yet, if I talk to his progeny, the people that followed him, they go, oh, he just said that. Again, what did Paul say? He is the chief of sinners. God told me I can't be the chief of sinners, at least yet. <laughs> and there's a reason, reason for that also. And I spoke on it before, but I'm not going to get into that. How we become responsible for our own sin. At what point do we begin to be considered not spiritually blind and have the ability to have our possessed state of mind be held against us? And I, I'll let that cat out of the bag real quick. I've said it before. When you begin to possess people, then you are responsible for your possessed state of mind. Albeit, that's a possessed state of mind, going back to the garden, that's what happened. They were possessed. Adam and Eve were possessed. Now, why does God not fix things in an instant manner and say, well, that's God. Why didn't God just go, okay, you're unpossessed? Because that would never have worked. Why? Because of the wills that go against God would not allow it to go and work. So what does that mean? That, mean God, that means God is absolutely intelligent and there's an evil spirit here. And I gotta, I'm going to clear it. <clears throat> when I do that, things happen upon the earth. A rolling ambulance is somewhere. Somebody's projecting evilly. Okay, so we go back to the garden, and God can't fix the things that God could normally fix because there are these wills that oppose God's. And God is perfect. God will never move God's will against your will. If you look in the scriptures, it always recommends that you turn your face towards God, that you come into subjection to God's will. Otherwise, things go wrong. Because... There are these basic rules of nature, spiritual nature that exist. So if you're receiving a down experience for sinning and you're possessed and you're spiritually blind, it's just part of the possession. It's not God. So again, we have similar things happening. Satan will mimic God and say that you're being punished by God, but not really. So we have these wills that go against God, and we have this per perfect ability to make the perfect choice because we were made in the image of God. And our ability to have free will is limited by that perfection. So these wills that go against God's will that possess you have now caused you to make error. But what's really happening at the highest level? You're making the perfect choice. Because that's the only choice you can make so that God's will plays out. Because there are wills that are going against God. So if somebody is using narcotics and is possessed to it, and somebody else is distributing that narcotics, if they both are spiritually blind, they are not 
the will that went against God's will. They can't be. And they can't make that choice, that wrong choice, without being possessed. So again, to, to rail at those that are possessed, and I'm going to get into another scripture in a second, but I'm going to speak about something right now. These wills that oppose God's are memorialized in Ephesians 6.12. The wills that oppose God's will that possess others, also known as the stumbling blocks, are memorialized in Ephesians 6.12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, the two people on the street, one dealing drugs, one taking drugs, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. That's why they're using drugs. Today we call it the deep state, and that's why the nation is in the condition that it's in. Do I believe that drug offenders, therefore, should not be arrested? Well, I believe they should be arrested and forthwith remanded to the closest rehab program for at least six months. That's what I believe. I believe in mandatory rehab. It's going to do us no good for people using addictive narcotics to keep using narcotics for the rest of their life until they do something to themselves or somebody else that nobody can fix. So again, uh, I think you're misusing the laws that are on the books, but I believe that the liberals are now knee-jerking in the other direction and abusing their ability to fix the use of those laws. They should still arrest people for them. Uh, they can expunge it after they show that they're clean for a year or something like that. There's ways to use law so that it works. There are ways to use law to make sure everything's broken. So uh, in Scripture, it tells us that people are bringing things upon themselves at times. But yet we have scripture that says otherwise also. We also get to the point that Jesus says, well, when you heal somebody, they go back to where they were and they take, you know, seven times the demons 50 different ways. Now, Jesus said, I am going, I'm going, I'm going to the Father. It's going to be a great time for me and the Father to do some more work up there. But greater work shall you do. So what does that mean? Time goes by. Information is released. Realizations are engaged in. Jesus comes to earth and heals uh, people that Jesus is attempting to awaken to greater information that Jesus now has also. So Rabbi Jesus says, greater work shall you do. And part of that is, I have knowledge now, direct from God and Jesus, that that person was repossessed. And when you're repossessed, it's always trying to get you to go back to where the original possession took place. Heal thyself, physician. Physicians aren't respected in their hometown. People that are possessed are repossessed in their hometown also. So the reality is that we take people into healing environments and they heal. And when they come out of these healing environments to include prison, they're being repossessed, sometimes by the law enforcement officers 
that are paid to heal the community, quite honestly. If you're a law enforcement officer, if you're not healing the community, it's either ignorance or you're an evil person. Because that's what you're there to do. But you're interested in making crime and making yourself famous. I understand that. I spoke on that earlier. You're interested in making crime and making yourself famous. I spoke on that earlier. So you are this perfect creation that makes no mistakes, but yet there are creation that have been possessed to the point of possessing. The onus is on them. So when the Bible speaks about a variety of people and a variety of things that appear to conflict, it doesn't conflict because it's speaking about different people and different uh, audiences and different groupings. It's not speaking about everybody all at once. So there are a multitude of people on the earth that are these spiritual blind ones. You, you, I want to go back to David Harris and that the MAGA hat and that shaved head woman. I don't know what you see because I can't see through your eyes. But when I looked at her with the eyes of God, I couldn't stand here if I felt what God felt. She's possessed. And everybody on this planet has been possessed at least once in their life. You're possessed to a body. That's part of what's going on. What does that mean? That means God did not create a body that gets sick and dies. You're in a different place. Why you are here is why you are here. I'm here because I was sent as a spirit. Or actually... I went as a spirit. I don't think I was exactly sent, but I was sent as a certain spirit to exist. And upon hearing about things on earth, I traveled in this direction and then was born into a body. I have that much information. I was never supposed to take a body. It's kind of a trap. <laughs> but God gets them back once I grow up and wake up. And all my life I've been operating, collecting information in my subconscious. But once they were assassinating me beyond a certain point, God had to wake me up and make it a conscious operation. So the reality is, what we see is not what's really going on because God's vision is higher God's ways are higher. We're looking through that glass darkly. We're not seeing. Am I telling you there should be no laws? No, I'm not saying that. Because that's where they're going to twist everything eventually. If I speak about beautiful, nice things and caring for others enough. But then again, if I speak about laws long enough, they'll say I don't care for people. So they are very deceptive, very disgusting, very putrid. And they are what I just spoke about. <clears throat> they are the principalities, the powers, the rulers of the darkness of this world, and the spiritual wickedness in high places. That is who they are, and that's who I've been speaking about. When I say deep states, that's what I'm speaking about. Go to Matthew sixteen seventeen. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. So 
until we know the Father reveals things to creation on earth. We know this. So when we hear, greater work shall you do, how is that going to happen? That's going to happen through many mechanisms to include God the Father's revelation to creation on earth. Again, Satan is trying to stagnate everything. You're not really fundamental traditionalists. You're neo-traditionalists. Everything was changed somewhere along the way, maybe a hundred years ago, and you stuck to that. <laughs> but it's not, it's not what was going on when Jesus was here. When Paul was here, it still wasn't the same thing that was going on when Jesus was here. But Paul did some pretty impressive things. Now we look, and when I speak about the deep state, we can look at 2 Corinthians 11.14. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. And no wonder, for Satan himself transforms or is transformed, I got stuck there. I got the New King James Version. So again, this is a, when it comes to versions, do what you want. <laughs> I'm not here to command you. I'm not God. I'll command angels, but you, you people do what you want. You're all kind of wacky. <laughs> it's easier to command angels than you people. Uh, King James Bible version is what I try to stick with. I've looked at some of the others. Uh, some people don't like when you go back to the original Greek. Well, you know, if God tells me to do it, I don't care how many shirts or, or, or ties or, or books you sell about KGV only. Uh, you can't read Greek, but, you know, if God tells me to go to the Greek, I go there. <laughs> but New King James Version has got to be some sort of scam, you know. Well, we couldn't get these people away from the King James Version. We'll take them to the New King James Version. Um, use your, the version you want. I have, I have the best work uh, in using the King James Bible. Um, I know King James spiritually. So I guess maybe there's a connection there. I, I have some weight in his world, and that's part of his world. And no marvel, Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. So again, that would be the deep state. And again, it's, it, it's, it's a planned appearance to be an angel of light. I mean, you see Pelosi, she's removing that demonic magic, trying to change herself into an angel of light. Vinman, he's trying to change himself into an angel of light. Schiff, constantly trying to change everyone into an angel of light that's, that's working the criminal enterprise deep state scam. <laughs> so you see what's happening there. So the reality is that you are created perfect. Why would God condemn you to hell? Because you're condemned already. There's nothing God can do. But what can God do? God can uncondemn you by sending his son, Jesus. I know it sounds simplistic, but it's very logical and advanced, especially when you consider what was going on on earth when Jesus was sent, the sacrifice was a mechanism. And Jesus was going to be killed anyway. They kill God's children here. The more aware you are, the more they'll kill you, and they'll kill you even before you wake up. Because all is known before, because you sold the eye to Satan. You sold the eye to Satan. The island earth is owned by Satan. That's why it's so hard. That's why it's an uphill struggle to move against the deep state. Because they sold the eye on earth to Satan. So, you're this perfect creation. You make all the right choices. They possess you to make the wrong choices. 
you're condemned because of a string of condemnation that condemned you before the law came. <laughs> so God said, we're going to get this right. We're going to make the law, and we're going to condemn everyone. So then we can liberate everyone. Because if we don't condemn everyone, then we're never going to get it right. We're never going to get it right to liberate everyone. Now, hell exists, and they're going to go to hell. I'm telling you. If, if God works a work, fine. But the way I understand it today, they're going to go to hell. They, they wouldn't let hell disappear. This is what happens. I wake up, God says, let's try to get rid of hell. There's going to be no hell. We're going to move everybody back to heaven upon death. Again, removing the condemnation that was created by creation. Because God's, God's world is perfect. There's no need for condemnation. Everybody makes the right choice. Everybody goes in the right direction. Nobody possesses anyone. <laughs> That's real. They killed me for it. <laughs> I tried to remove hell. You've heard people preach on it. Because that was one of the works. They can't tell you how it all works. Only I can. Because it was my movement. You're attempting to get rid of hell. But in the deep state, they want hell. Because they're going to put you in hell. You see, they're going to damn you to hell. And it's going to start here on earth. But you're going to be saved in the end and go back to heaven. So the reality is, they condemn themselves to hell. And you've heard Christians say that. I know that one's a little more mainstream than most of the things I say. You've heard Christians say that most people condemn themselves to hell with what they say and what they do. By condemning others. And that's in the Bible also. That judgment you meet out will be judged against you. Now, being angry is not it, because Satan will always make the good people get angry and say that you're judging, or make a mistake and say that you're judging. It requires your heart. Now, you can't look at the outward appearance of things. So it's Free will, you have free will, but if you're not manifesting your life, if you're spiritually blind, and there's another thing in there, if you're not able to defend, and if God can't defend you, because remember, God makes a system. You do A, God does B. The Bible tells you that. What Satan says, if I can cause Z to happen in their life, I'll say that they didn't do A. So again, appearances. So if you do something, you're supposed to become more holy. You watch Paul. Paul says, we do this, we do that. We go this way, we go that way. Well, Satan fights that. So Satan says, I'll cause the reaction, the sin reaction to be in that person's life while I operate them into sin. And they'll get none of the purification and the up from doing the good works, from believing in Jesus, from praying, from being with God in their mind, meditating all day. And then there are other people on earth that do the same thing. Deep state. That's where they tend to congregate in the deep state. That includes private sector people that are part of that communist party movement, and they're both conservative and liberal, as well as anything else you can think of. They're just plain old evil. Even if they're working charity, they're still evil. The Bible tells you charity. The reason the Bible used charity in both of those in the King James Version is very important. Some of the other versions say love. Because God wanted you to think about it. You can be charitable and not be charitable at the same time. Because you don't have charity. Charity of the heart. Other versions will say love, but that doesn't get where it needs to get to. That's kind of an earthly thought. Well, if you don't love that person and you give them a thousand dollars, then you're not engaged in charity. That's not really what it's saying. You have a heart. You have a will. Well, you shouldn't have a will. Would you have a heart? Which means... Once you move your will, you're outside of God. 
I know they say it's use your willpower, and it, it, I don't know if it's willpower is exactly it. Maybe some people believe it is. It's your, your spiritual projection. Once you move a spiritual projection, your will, then you're outside of God's will. Because that's not needed. That's why they say to pray, to heal. God knows what you want. But again, make parameters so you never do that. Tell yourself that. They'll kill you for it. But you'll be holier in God's eyes for it. Again, God's vision says, okay, I know who's holy and who's not. And you have people that are transformed into angels a lot that are criminals. While you try to make everybody else a criminal using a deep state, because you all feel so darn guilty about being the perverted, reprobate criminals that you are. So you got to make everybody else a worse criminal, a worse reprobate, a worse pervert than you are. DHS, FBI, Marshal Service, local police, state police, church member, church preacher. So again, we have these things that we believe are right and they're wrong. Anybody, does, does that strike a bell with anybody in the mind scripturally? We have things that we believe are right, but it's actually wrong. So what is the, the key to all of it? To realizing these things. The Bible wants you to realize all of these things together and then move along and become all things for gospel's sake. Because what you're doing is you're trying to transform yourself into an angel of light. You're spending all your energy and all your time and all of your tempting the Lord your God, all the tempting of the Lord your God to turn yourself into an angel of light. Instead of becoming all things, living Christian liberty, not embracing sin, but realizing the harder I strive for God, the harder it's going to be. And some people realize that. So they're not going to strive there. They're going to strive in their little cookie-cutter world. They're not going to be Robin Gritz going outside the box trying to save Bob Levinson. They're not going to be General Flynn going outside the box to save Robin Gritz. They're going to be McCabe. They're going to be Comey. They're going to be Brennan. They're going to be Mueller. Angels of life, they look great, don't they? Well, they're getting a little dirty today. Rightfully so. I've been working this work, awakened and aware since 2004 or so. And if you believe somebody else is responsible for it, fine, God is. But don't think for a second that somebody else moved it outside of what God had me do. Many people transform themselves into many things and make Tons of money doing it. But you won't see me transforming myself into anything for any reason. I'll be exactly what God tells me to be. And I'll analyze every single thing you've ever done to anybody to cause what you cause to include the death of Rabbi Jesus Emmanuel Christ, Ben David, son of David, Ben Elohim, son of God. I am in Scripture, in several names, in several Scriptures. I could care less whether you believe it, because I know you're a devil from hell. And you'll return to hell when you leave here. So, many people on the planet were saved by Jesus, even if they don't know he exists. He said, you should not have told me you could see. We know he's not speaking about physical sight. Why won't the preachers tell you about spiritual vision? Are they worried about not appearing to be an angel of light? That the deep state will come in and cause them to be overthrown? What stops them from telling you about spiritual vision 
and that Jesus saved the blind, the spiritually blind. That number, I can't even begin to, be, to fathom it. The number of spiritually blind people on the planet whose sins will not be held against them because Rabbi Jesus Emmanuel Christ, Ben David, Ben Elohim could care less whether you believed he was an angel of light or not. He didn't care. He'll take your temple and tell you where to go with it. Praise God that he did and praise God that I can. The number of people that Jesus can save is, is immense. The church minimizes it on earth so people don't necessarily receive some of the earthly blessing they would get from it so that they could awaken and possibly be a Christian. You're killing your own community. You're killing the people coming into the church and it has a lot less to do with some LGBTQ thing or some liberal thing than it does what the church is doing to itself. I love church. I love temples. I love synagogue. I love Hindu temples. I love, I love any place where people gather and talk about God. I'm not so much into the God's thing, but to listen to how gods and angels serve God is an interesting topic. Very interesting. I've seen man very angry at angels and gods because they want to be closer to the God than the angels and gods are. But yet, I'll tell you, angels and gods want them to be closer to the God than anybody. Just get closer. Get closer to God. You don't have to push somebody out of the way to get closer to God. God's got enough space and love for everyone. So again, you should see with God's eyes. Try to get there. Forget about trying to make yourself look like an angel of light. Not telling you to sin. Not telling you to fall. Because you're already sinning and you're already falling. You just have categories of sin and fall in this that somebody put in your mind so that you can orchestrate something to make yourself feel better about being you instead of the other person. But yet, it causes the disruption we're seeing in the church. And don't give me the lip service. No, well, in my church, <laughs> we're talking about your head. Get out of your church and into your head. Get out of your church and into your head. Desire to see with God's eyes. If you go so, to some of the Sikh uh, songs, hymns, you'll find that there are people in the past, amazing people. If you would just let God take you on a journey through the people that have been here, that love God. I mean, you don't know what to say when you can connect with the person that loves God. I mean, really loves God doesn't want to be an angel of light. Wants to say, God, let me, let me see with your eyes. Let me have your heart. I want to see these people for who they really are. I want to love them like you love me. Why do I do what I do? Because I love people. I love creation. Before I came to earth, I loved creation. And of course, we're creation here. But I loved even outside of the body creation. And I love outside of the body creation here also. But I lived a physical life here, and I love people. And Satan did everything he could to mess that up. Of course, being the deep state, being something wanting to transform themselves into an angel of light, while they weren't. But get out of your church and get into your head. Church is just a building, man. The church is just a building. Is it the body of Christ? Well, your church is not the body of Christ. Your church is even one cell of the body of Christ.
Get out of your church and into your head. Clean the cobwebs out. Connect to God. To God. You don't have to use the mediator all the time. I'll tell you that. The mediator is a springboard to God. Jesus came so that you could be with God. Jesus loves God so much. A lot of people love Jesus. And they're like, oh, Jesus. A lot of people think Jesus is God. Well, Jesus is the Son. Jesus had made that clear on multiple occasions. But yet, he was manifesting the qualities of God on earth. Why? How does he have the qualities of God on earth? Because he was made in the image of God. He was made in the image of God. He was the Son of God that came here. Because he can save that which was lost. And these things paid back dividend that he could manifest as that creation made in the image of God, also being a son of God. So again, when we go to war, and we got people like Eddie Gallagher, we, we give him all sorts of weapons, all sorts of gadgets. And he begins to manifest as this, this Eddie Gallagher the Terrible. When you see Eddie Gallagher... In, uh, in the media, on television, or on the video, on your computer or your phone, <laughs> you see this guy, you're like, that guy? What, what, what can he do? <laughs> I probably had some of the same thing going on in my life. But you look at him, you're like, well, he just seems like an average Joe. He seems like a nice guy. But when we start to manifest Eddie <laughs> with all this gear and all these gadgets and all this training... He becomes Eddie the Terrible against the enemies of the United States. So Jesus had the same thing going on. He came to earth, was the son of God. There are sons of God. You can't say there's only one when there's many in the Bible. You, 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 people look at us like we're crazy. You're saying there's only one son of God, but this thing talks about a bunch of son of God. <laughs> or sons of God. Not sons of God. See, that's Satan trying to mess my tongue up. No, no, he's not. The devil is in the detail. Always remember that. The devil is in the detail. But get your head out of your church and get into your head. Get out of your church and get into your head. And then you can get back into your church and possibly things will start happening. You can talk to God right now, and God can talk to you. Just tell yourself that. You can talk to God right now. God is on a phone right now, a headphone, <laughs> in your mind, waiting for you to call. And you don't have to pledge any money. You don't have to pledge to do anything, because the cost has been paid by Rabbi Jesus. The cost was paid. The ability for you to reconnect to God was paid by Rabbi Jesus when he was on the planet. Right now, you can talk to God and God doesn't care what you've done or who you are. Because yes, you want to go to Jesus. You want to believe that God could love you so much and that Jesus could love you so much that his son Jesus, God's son Jesus, would come to earth so that you could simply believe and be saved. No religion in the world will let you be saved with surety outside of Rabbi Jesus, Son of God. No other religion. I've seen them. Well, I, I, it kind of says I go there, but I don't know. <laughs> That's really where they are. Isn't it? There, there's some great people there. There's some nasty people there. There's some stable people. There's some unstable people. There, it's the same world that you'll find in a church. The same world you'll find in a church. Looking at the time here. Okay, I got a few minutes, and then we have the uh, altar call. <laughs> have an altar call in your own mind. Call the world to your spirit, soul. And explain to them what it is to be with God. And maybe 
they can tell you in your mind what it is for them to be with God. The Quakers were spiritually awakened people. They walked into a room. Their church was a church where nobody spoke. Because inside their mind, there was divine communication. But they were no different than you. Now, speaking now in the presence of William Penn, Pennsylvania is named for William Penn. He's a very interesting person to learn about. And when I manifested qualities, God does this to me all the time. I manifest qualities of William Penn, and he said, hey, look, read this over here on Wikipedia. <laughs> and I'm like, that's pretty funny. William Penn's got and I are kind of alike in certain ways. In certain ways. We're not all alike because we have dis different personalities. But we were made in the image of God. So we're always going to do what's right, even if we're doing what's wrong, because you're limited by all of that will opposing God in what you can do right. You're doing the highest right in your life. So I believe everybody will be saved one day. Do I know how that's going to happen? No. Do I know that the Bible says that people will go to hell? Yes. Do I know somewhere in the Bible it tells me that sin is going to be thrown in the lake of fire and everybody else will kind of escape? Yes. I believe that's the end. Everything that causes sin, everything that causes fallenness, will be thrown in that lake of fire. It is not your original form. It is not anybody's original form. Sin has nothing to do with creation. Creation is perfect because it is made in the image of God. You cannot fall, but you can be possessed. And what is possession? How does that take place? Because your heart will not let you do something, your real heart, your soul, will not let you do something to cause another to fall, even if you physically look like you're causing someone to fall. So you actually have to go through the throes of being evil at times, just so God can save some. That's the moral of the scriptures. God and the creation become all things for the gospel's sake so that we may save some. But yet we need to stay focused on the time and space that we're living in. We need to stay focused on the time and space that we're living in so that we can be effective in liberating the captives from what the deep state and others have gone, what the deep state and others have done to possess their minds and causing them to fall. For in the life of Rabbi Jesus Emmanuel Christ, Ben David, son of David, Ben Elohim, son of God. Words were uttered as he manifested the Creator's power through a more perfected creation, namely himself at the moment. That stand today with that power and the power of others that have come in that name over the years. That, have, that has provided a hidden liberty to those that could not be healed and awakened in their lifetime. It's immense. Do I tell you not to believe in Jesus? Do I tell you not to tell your mother to believe in Jesus? Do I tell you not to tell your brother, your sister, your friend, you, the person that you believe is your enemy? No, I don't tell you that. I tell you it's the only thing on earth that is this free gift and surety of you going home to God. But yet, the Bible still speaks of a journey into hell. 
For who? They might appear as angels of light sometime. Because Satan will transform them. Who's going to hell? Not the flesh and blood. The principalities, the powers, the rulers of the darkness of this world, and the spiritual wickedness in high places, because woe unto those stumbling blocks. Well, praise God in all that you do. Just believe and you shall be saved. Praise God. You are listening to the Law Enforcement Pirate Radio Network. Radio Free Larry You can run, but you can't hide. 